the problem is that banks are inclined to take risks and someone has to evaluate those risks and uh, decide whether they're good risks or bad risks. But it's all subjective. So even the regulators can't say, and often banks themselves couldn't say, whether it was a good bet or a bad bet. And you can tell how difficult it is because the Bank for International Settlements and most of the central banks said that bonds of governments were risk-free and consequently the banks didn't have to keep reserves against them. Well, as we've seen uh, recently in Greece and elsewhere, uh, that they're not necessarily risk-free. And this has happened, of course, before. Well, our concern is profound when we note that leadership of the G20 group of nations appear blithely unaware that radical and fundamental reform is required. What we are proposing is a system that would uh, radically alter this basically unstable and unsustainable system that we have now, which is so prone to, uh, to ups and downs, recessions, depressions, and volatile interest rates with the devastating effect that they have had on uh, ordinary people who have lost their businesses, their homes, their uh, farms, and their jobs. And that just will keep on going on as long as we have the system that is currently in effect in the world. So what we are proposing for consideration is that we learn from the experience of the last 72 years and apply the lessons that are to be learned. First, the so-called capital adequacy system has got to go. It's uncontrollable, and you can lay as many uh, layers as you want of bureaucracy on top, and they still are making subjective judgments, and uh, it is not a satisfactory system. It's just gambling, and it should end at once. Second, the cash reserve system must be restored so that governments have a direct control over the rate of money increase, over the money supply, and uh, a chance to try and mitigate the wild fluctuations that have occurred in the past. Third, bank leverage has to be drastically reduced. And so when I was thinking about this, I wondered what the banks themselves do. And the rule of thumb that most of them have is that they won't lend money to anyone who has debt in excess of three times their capital. And even then, they have to have a positive cash flow in order to justify a loan. So there's no reason why the banks shouldn't live by their own standards, by their own rule. And so we're recommending that bank leverage be reduced from 20 to 1 to 3 to 1, which is the leverage that banks themselves consider to be prudent. Fourth, and of profound significance, the government created money has to be increased to 34% of the total up from the 3 to 5% that it creates at the present time. And the bank's share of money creation has to be reduced from 66 down from 95%. If the government created, money is created as debt-free money, then all countries will see their debt to GDP uh, curves reverse. And instead of going up, as they have been, they will level out and then start to go down, which is exactly uh, what, they, uh, what they should do. Of course, the 34% reserve that we're recommending uh, should be phased in over a matter of a number of years. Uh, this will allow the banks to adjust uh, at a reasonable rate, but the benefits would be immediate. At the end of last year, the Canadian banks had more than 
$2 trillion in assets, but only about 1% of that in cash. So if you, receive, if you uh, increase the reserves by 3%, say to a total of 4%, that would give the government enough money-creating capability to pay off the entire deficit for last year without having to borrow anything. And if you increased it at another 3%, it would be enough to pay the deficit for this coming year without having to borrow anything and put the uh, people into further uh, debt. Add a couple of percent and there would be enough left over <clears throat> to assist the provinces through their rough patch. Their revenues are way down as a result of the recession, which was a result of the banking system, and yet uh, no one's coming to their rescue. Contrary to what is being said in Canada, uh, our government did go to the rescue of the banks and uh, lent them 75, well, not lent them, they gave, bought $75 billion worth of their toxic assets to provide the liquidity that they needed. And now they're buying uh, uh, US banks with a lot of it instead of uh, promoting industry and uh, jobs and uh, entrepreneurs here in Canada. So it would be good if we could help the provinces a little bit and have a little bit left over for further stimulation to provide jobs for some of the people that were disadvantaged by the uh, banking system. We're recommending that instead of giving the Bank of Canada or other central banks bonds in exchange for the money that they create, that governments give them non non-redeemable and non-refundable, uh, non-convertible shares in the country in nominal amounts of a billion or five billion or 10 billion or whatever is, uh, is uh, appropriate to the occasion. And this way, the central bank, the Bank of Canada or other central banks would have the uh, shares on their books as an asset against the money that they created for the government and everyone would be happy, but the debt as recorded on the government books, would start to go down rather than being stable or going up. The money for all practical purposes would be debt free. Well, the infusion of substantial sums of debt free money would end the tsunami of debt that has been put the, putting the whole world financial system uh, in jeopardy and paralyzed governments from taking the essential steps to solve the problems of the real world as opposed to the demands of the money changers. And this I would like to say without any equivocation, unless the G20 adopts this plan or something very close to it, you can kiss the world goodbye as a hospitable habitat for the human species because governments simply will not have the money necessary to finance the change that is required to stop global warming before it is too late. The situation is just that serious and we hope and pray that the G20 will listen and abandon this terrible system that has got the world in such a mess and adopt one that will offer hope for everyone. 